Okay, we're good to go. Yeah, if we get their attention. <laughs> All right, so the uh, paper that Chris and I did was larval exposure to four non-alphenol and 17 beta estradiol affects physiological and behavioral development of seawater adaptation and medical examining sports. And that's that, so any questions? <laughs> So, um, Atlantic salmon range in habitat from the northern Atlantic as far south as the Iberian Peninsula and New England. And since the mid-80s, worldwide populations of wild salmon have declined by 45%. And this is due uh, in part to anthropogenic sources such as dams, contaminants, and fisheries. Um, the parsimal transformation in the salmon is um, really important in the life cycle. Um, it prepares juvenile salmon for downstream migration and um, ocean entry, and it does this by morphological, physiological, and behavioral change. Um, and parsimal transforma transformation is mediated by um, endogenous hormones like growth factor, um, IGF-1, thyroid hormone, and cortisol. And with seawater tolerance, there is an increase in sodium potassium ATPA's activity in normal transformation. Um, and seawater is three times the osmolality of the internal environment of the so, um, The estrogenic compounds that they talked about were nonophenol, which is a xenoestrogen, which is found in manufacturing. Um, it's used in paper, agricultural chemicals, cosmetics, contraceptives, cleaning supplies, paint. Um, and 17 beta estradiol, which is a naturally occurring sex hormone. Um, as you can see, there they can be very similar in structure. Um, which ones, which? Um, estradiol and nonal phenol. Um, just by the name, nonal phenol, it's a phenol with um, nine carbon chain. Just in this configuration, it looks a lot like estradiol. Um, so the experiment was. Um, the authors subjected Atlantic salmon yolk sac larvae to nonophenol and estradiol and observed physiological and behavioral effects on the parsimal transformation. Um, fish rearing. Um, Atlantic salmon eggs were obtained from White River National Fish Hatchery and transferred to the Count Anadromus Fish Nadimus. Research Center. Nadimus. I almost got there. Do you know where that is? I yeah, just down the road, an hour. Um, the eggs were maintained until hatching, and they were covered in egg trays with a flow rate of 1 to 2 liters of water per minute. After treatment, um, low levels, low, high concentration of nonophenol, vehicle of um, methanol and estradiol um, were treated to the larvae, um, and freshwater flow rate of 2 to 4 liters per minute and they were maintained under a natural photo period. Um, five months after treatment, fish were transferred to 1.6 meter diameter tanks, and fresh water flow rate increased to six, six to eight liters per minute, and they were maintained under natural photo period and fed twice a day. Um, 3,421 day post-hatch Atlantic salmon yolk sac larvae were exposed to 10 or 100 microliters of nonophenol, which is the low and the high concentration. Um, 17 beta estradiol or the vehicle, which was methanol. Um, solutions were delivered by a peristaltic pump and mixed in head tanks to deliver target concentrations on a continuous basis for 21 days. Um, fish sampling. During peak smolt development, 12 fish from each treatment group were placed in 30% salt water for the salt water challenge. Um, assessed in a behavioral assay for their preference for salt water, or exposed to a handling stressor to examine the impact of additional stressful stimuli during development. The salt water challenge, um, the fish were netted from the freshwater tank and rapidly transferred to a salt water tank. Um, fish were then sampled to assess ion regulatory abilities 24 hours after the transfer. The behavioral assay, um, freshwater and salt water tanks were placed parallel to one another and connected by a bridge and 12 fish from each treatment group were netted and placed in the freshwater tank and allowed to acclimate. 
Um, fresh water was then added to the fresh water tank and allowed to spill over to the salt water tank until there was 7.6 centimeter um, water over the bridge and activity of the fish was then videotaped. Um, and it was analyzed for presence of fish in the salt water tank in 30 second intervals for two hours and the number of fish that entered um, was also analyzed. And um, handling stressor, fish were taken out of the water and held in a net for 45 <coughs> seconds, followed by two minutes of crowding, and they were sampled three hours post-stressor. Um, the analytical methods they used, um, the gill sodium potassium ATPase activity was measured um, according to McCormick's microassay protocol. Um, I tried really, really hard to find out exactly what that entailed, but I couldn't actually find the paper um, without interlibrary loaning it, which was kind of short notice, so I couldn't Sorry, do. I have it. I could have given it to you. <laughs> um, gill filaments were homogenized in SEI buffer and centrifuged. Um, sodium potassium ATPase activity of the supernatant was determined by linking ATP hydrolysis to the oxidation of NADH in the presence and absence of water. Um, that actually is the microassay protocol. That is it? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. That's fine. Um, protein content of the gill homogenate was measured using bisyncononic acid protein assay, which is, um, for the people that are in biochem, it's similar to the Bradford reagent that we used. Um, it measures protein concentration in accordance to um, color change, and you can graph that and get a standard curve. Um, plasma um, GH levels were measured using a double antibody salmon GH radio immune assay. Um, plasma thyroid T4 and T3 were measured using direct radio immuno assay. And plasma cortisol was measured using an enzyme immuno assay. And plasma chloride concentration was measured using silver titration, silver titration chloridometry, which was really cool. It's um, they take the um, plasma chloride and they stick it in this concentrate. It's like a silver bath, kind of. And when the chloride binds to the silver, it falls out of solution as precipitate. And then once um, the silver concentration is um, exceedingly high, the computer measures it and stops measurements. So you can determine how much chloride is in the plasma. Um, and all statistics were analyzed using the statistic. OK, so results. Uh, here this graph shows the uh, mortality <coughs> rates. Um, these are the uh, mortality rates for the non uh high dosage. Um, this is the low dosage and this is the estradiol. Um, it's important to see that during exposure, the high dosage, high dosage of non actually had a 50% mortality rate, which continued at that rate for um, 60 days after exposure. And actually, there was 100% mortality 120 days later. So they're all they all died. Uh, and then you can see the important thing here is that uh, between 30 and 60 days after the treatment for um, the low doses of nonalphenol and estradiol, uh, there's actually a fourfold increase in uh, mortality. Um, and just to note that they actually didn't really continue quantifying the high dosages of nonalphenol because it's just not really relevant to, there's not you know, 100 micrograms in any rivers that they've tested. So they kind of just left that one alone as just an outlier. Um, so nice, nice. Um, okay, then this is this shows the uh, treatment with the low low dose of nonalphenol or the estradiol um, actually increased the uh, plasma chloride of smolts by over five to ten uh, micromoles of our uh, over the control group um, after 24 hours in the salt water. So you can see that they're kind of having a hard time uh, controlling all that salt that's coming in and everything. <coughs> And this graph shows that the freshwater gill sodium potassium ATPase was reduced um, 28% in fish treated with NPL and 17% in fish treated with E2. Um, and not shown here in the results is that the saltwater gill sodium potassium pump actually didn't uh, change much. But it's important to note because the uh, function of that pump uh, is really important in understanding the small development and how they're changing. And obviously very important in ion regulation when they're entering salt water. Um, um, this one shows um, the uh, results from the saltwater challenge or saltwater um, preference versus freshwater. 
um, the vehicle here shows that they uh, enter into the salt water 